What's going on YouTube? Uh, welcome to my first video and welcome to the channel. Um, probably most of my friends watching this right now, so shout out to you guys for uh, coming by and checking out the video. Lately I've been seeing a lot of uh, e-commerce YouTubers and they've been doing uh, 24 hour dropshipping challenges. So I figured what better way to start off my channel than uh, to do one of those. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. And uh, for those of you guys who don't know already, dropshipping is a business model um, where basically you find undervalued products, typically from China, AliExpress, something like that. And then you may build a store around it. So I use Shopify, there are other platforms to do so. And then you drive traffic to your store uh, through Facebook, Google, Pinterest, whatever, and try to, try to make sales. So then customers will come on your store and let's say you sell your product for $30 a piece and you get that product from your supplier uh, for $10. So when you sell that product, your supplier will ship the product to the uh, end consumer and you'll basically keep uh, that difference of $20 in between there. Um, so that's drop shipping. And uh, a lot of you guys right now are saying, oh, you know, drop shipping's dead. And um, one thing I wanna show you guys is I just started a store literally a couple days ago. So I'm just gonna show you my dashboard here. This focuses. So we've done refresh that for you. We've done about 1.7K um, in sales. So, you know, clearly drop shipping is not dead. And uh, I want to prove this to you guys by, you know, do, taking on this 24 hour challenge. And so I'm going to start setting up the store right away. And uh, then I'll check back in with you guys when I'm done that, hopefully in an hour or two. And then I can briefly go over the store, show you guys everything I did from there. And then, you know, we can move on to the advertising and uh, hopefully in 24 hours from now, I'll have a lot of good results to show you. And, uh, some money to be made what's up guys so it's now about two and a half hours later and um basically i've pretty much finished building out the store here yeah, so let's jump into the uh, site now and then um after that we'll uh run some facebook ads hopefully okay first things first uh so this is the product that i landed on so it's uh it's a baby diaper bag and uh the cool thing about it is that it actually um pulls out and you can change your baby um, inside of it or you can uh, actually your baby can take a nap um, on the go on a travel uh, that sort of thing so this is what the product looks like and then uh, of course on Shopify I went and built out the site um, so now I'm gonna go over the site here so keep in mind I only did this in a couple hours and um, if it looks like you know the baby's head is cut off here and uh, there's a bunch of other things, you know, if I go over to the product page here and there's all this white space, keep in mind it's not actually that bad because I only had enough time to really optimize it for mobile, um, which is all that matters for this challenge. And um, quite frankly, sometimes you can get away with doing this uh, for a very long period of time just because uh, most most uh, website visitors will actually be coming onto your website uh, on their cell phone. So it's really important to optimize your uh, your site for mobile. And so looking at the uh, product page here right away, so I found some high quality images of the product uh, in all the different colors. So that was a must and I make sure they're all the same size and everything so it flows nicely across the page when you're looking at them. And then, um, you know, right here, just uh, nothing too crazy here, just a simple title I came up with. And then uh, I added some reviews here with uh, A reviews. Um, they show up at the bottom of the page here like this and just imported these uh, straight out of AliExpress. And then in terms of the uh, product description here, I was able to uh, find some good content online, um, some good gifts I can throw in there. So these two gifts really uh, showcase uh, how the product is used, which is really important. And then um, I feel like my copywriting skills are pretty good thus far. You know, I've worked on a lot of stores up until this point, so I'm able to kind of understand um, you know what what type of copy it takes to actually sell your product So I was able to you know write something like the three-in-one crawler pack 2.0 is the number one must-have item For every parent and soon-to-be parent so a bold claim there and then I go right away and start talking about you know um, how this product can provide uh, benefit in um, in the customer's life and then Continue down the line here, and it's it's really all about uh, benefits. So it's just um it's uh, benefit driven and it shows the uh, consumer exactly what they're going to get out of this product again down here high capacity and then i always like to throw in some sort of a uh, guarantee um, so this makes uh you know potential buyers feel really comfortable about uh, making a purchase from your website so you know that just makes uh your your customer feel really confident um, really comfortable with making a purchase off your website 
um, knowing that they can get their money back in 30 days if they're not satisfied with the product. And then, of course, um, shipping and delivery. So I say all orders are expertly packaged, prepared, and shipped within one to three business days. And um, so I've actually talked to the supplier who is selling uh, the diaper bags, which is awesome. So I was able to uh, acquire express shipping and um, make sure that they are uh, dispatched within one to three business days so I can actually make uh, these claims on the website as well. And then, you know, it's sometimes important to have an FAQ on your product description. And I would go with an FAQ if your product, you know, is a little bit more complex or it requires a further description about how it's used. So for example, this product, a lot of people might not know that it pulls out and has all these functions and you know, all these extra compartments and everything there. So that's why I decided to go with an FAQ at the very bottom of this product uh, product description. And another thing you guys probably noticed here is the, uh, the trust seals. So they're actually a part of an app that uh, comes with a lot of great features and I'll show you guys the apps uh, in just a moment here. So I added these in, um, these trust seals. I usually add them into my stores. You don't have to, it's probably not a make it or break it thing, but you know, it's just something small you can do. And then um, I added this sale timer and then I added a uh, hurry, only 68 units left in stock. So for all of my um, different products, you know, they're all gonna have a certain amount of units left in stock and this bar is gonna make, uh, really make that urgency um, visible to the uh, to the customer there so hopefully they they make a purchase right away worried that it might sell out especially with the sale timer as well and then down here you know I got the bulk discounts uh, so buy two at 10% off by three you know you get the you get the idea there and that's just really to encourage people um, to make more purchases of this product and in the in turn give me more revenue so other than that, um, this is basically the most important page of the website. Uh, you guys probably know the, um, the product page itself is what's really gonna sell the product, uh, especially on a, on a one product store, like the crawler pack store over here. And if I go over to home, um, it's nothing too crazy. I just have the product here. Since it is a one product store, I just threw it up right on the home page. Just a banner image and you know a bold claim, like the only bag you'll ever need and then a little description under that there and you know nothing too crazy some testimonials down here um a little uh, email form to uh collect to collect uh, emails for a mailing list that sort of thing and then i got all my links in the footer um an email there in case they want to email me and then i've linked in a facebook and an instagram which i have yet to develop and i'll quickly do that um in a moment here and so yeah other than that i just got the contact us page um where they can, you know, reach me at, at my email and then a track, track my order page where I put after ship in so they can go ahead and use their tracking number uh, to track their package. So in terms of the apps, uh, all of these apps I use across all my stores. And so I figured uh, these would be a good one, good amount of apps here to start with. So a reviews, again, what, like I was talking about earlier is just that review app to get reviews at the bottom of your product description, uh, crush picks, basically compresses all your images on your website uh, to help speed up your uh, website uh, load time so that uh, you know customers won't have to wait a long time and actually makes a pretty surprising difference to be honest like a lot of customers they really don't like to wait even a couple seconds and they'll probably click off your website if it doesn't load fast and then um, we got mass fulfill over here so mass fulfill basically when I'm working with my supplier what I do is I send them a spreadsheet. I export it from Shopify of all the orders and they send me a spreadsheet back with the tracking numbers and everything. And then mass fulfill will just fulfill all of those orders for me uh, right away in Shopify. So I don't have to go in and do everything manually. And then Oberlo is where I initially imported the product to. I'm sure everyone's familiar with Oberlo. And then uh, reconvert as well. Reconvert is basically an app where it, uh, it makes a thank you page um, into an upsell page. So you can get people, you know, to reorder the same items that they already ordered at a discounted price or order other items from your store or that sort of thing. I haven't actually set the page up yet, but again, I'm soon to be doing that. I'm just really tight on time here with this challenge. And then um, SMS bump for my uh, flows. So abandoned cart flows are hugely important uh, to the success of any store. And if you're not using any abandoned cart flows at all, then you're really just leaving a lot of revenue on the table. And again, all of these apps, 
I will be showing you guys, you know, in another video to come. So please, uh, you know, smash that like button for me and hit the subscribe button down below as well. Because if you do that, then you can check back every single week and I'll show you exactly, you know, in depth um, details about how to use all these apps and how they, you know, they, how they've made a lot of money for me in the past. And then Vitals was the, the app that I was speaking on earlier with all of the, um, the different little things on the product description there so like the the clock timer and the stock urgency and the trust seals and you know it's just tons of apps uh roll into one and i'll probably do a video uh just on this app at some point as well because this app i use it on pretty much every store especially when i'm starting out with a new store and it just covers so much ground and it will boost your revenue tremendous tremendously so this app is hugely important and uh stay tuned for that video coming soon Okay, so that's basically it for the, um, the store itself that I built out. And just quickly touching on the product. So the reason why I chose that product is, like I was mentioning earlier about the uh, product research that I do, I found that there was a few other people uh, who were selling this product and they were having you know crazy success with this over the past few weeks. And the one thing that I noticed that a lot of people who were selling this product were doing it, doing so in a general store. So, you know, they didn't have that branded feel. So I really tried to build this store out as best I could to have that branded feel, really show that it's a, a baby product store and um, hopefully kind of cater to, you know, the new the new mom audience or the pregnant lady audience or something like that. And that's another reason uh, why I picked the product as well is so with Facebook ads, which is what I'll be do using for this challenge, is that you can target people and so it's really easy to target like uh, you know pregnant ladies or uh, new moms or moms with uh, babies or small children or parents and that sort of thing so that's another reason why I picked the product and why I feel it's gonna do really well and in terms of pricing I did a lot of competitor research which is something you should typically do um, when you're deciding on a product to sell and I found that actually most of the competitors were selling, you know, the product for well over a hundred dollars. And it makes sense considering that the product was like $40, $50 um, a piece on uh, AliExpress. However, with my supplier, I was actually able to get the product down to under $40, just under 40, um, which is awesome because now I can sell the product for, you know, $79.99 and, you know, make a 2x margin, which is pretty decent considering that the product, you know, I'm selling it for $80. So it's a relatively high ticket item. Um, so that gives me like, you know, $40 uh, gross margin there. So that gives me a lot of room with Facebook ads in order to make profit. And what I mean by that is, for example, if I, if it takes me $39 of ad spend to make one sale, you know, I'm still profiting a dollar at that point. Whereas if I got the product for like $50, and I sold it for 60, uh, you know, I, if, I were to, if I were to spend $10 um, on the ads for a single sale, then I wouldn't be profitable. So it's nice to have $40 of room. I feel like that's really good uh, for running ads. And another great thing about this product as well is that I was looking on a lot of pages on Instagram and um, there's a lot of like pregnancy and like new mom pages and things like that, which uh, the target audience there would be perfect for running, you know, sponsored uh, influencer posts in the future. And I'll probably make another video on that, maybe to do with this store, maybe another one, maybe another challenge or something. But uh, yeah, in, in Instagram uh, influencer marketing can be a great way uh, to bring a lot of revenue in for your company as well. But for the sake of this challenge, I'm going to be using uh, Facebook ads and um, I'm going to get started on setting up the campaigns and everything now. And then when I'm done that, I will show you guys the breakdown of all the campaigns and exactly what I did. And then I actually have a guy who does video editing and that stuff for me. So hopefully he'll be able to grab some content from online and then be able to, you know, whip me up a few ads that I can run tonight uh, for the product or I'll set for tonight at midnight. And then tomorrow uh, we can check back and see the results in approximately uh, about 20 hours from now. All right, so this is the ad that the uh, video editor sent me. And um, I'm pretty sure he just used a lot of content and clips from uh, AliExpress because I did tell him to uh, whip it up for me as fast as he, as he could. Um, but anyways, without further ado, here is the, uh, here's the ad.
So the 24 hour challenge is now officially complete. And uh, before we get into everything, I just want to say I totally forgot to show you guys the breakdown of uh, the Facebook campaign and how I set that up. Um, but it's no big deal because I can go through exactly how I did that and all of the data that got collected along with it now. Um, but just before that, I want to show you guys uh, the results and how it went. So without further ado, I'll open up the, uh, the dashboard here. Uh, as you can see, we did around $168 uh, US in sales there. So again, that was on $150 in ad spend and uh, each product costed me $30 US. So just to give you guys the breakdown, um, again, that's $168 in sales uh, with $150 in ad spend and $90 in product cost. Uh, the first person ordered uh, one of the bags and then the second person actually placed an order for two. Uh, so that puts us at $90 um, in product cost and then uh, $14 for the domain. In total, we were, uh, we were down around $86 US at the end of this challenge. Um, but I don't see that as a loss really, just because as you guys know, it takes Facebook a while to, uh, to optimize and get going and everything. And um, since I tested a bunch of different ad sets, which I will show you guys uh, in a couple of minutes here, um, there are some ad sets you know, that can be profitable out of those ones and you can later leave those ones on, turn other ad sets off, and um, as you go along with the store, you can start to become uh, more profitable. Um, but overall, you know, I sold three of these things um, in the really short amount of time that I had. And I feel that that was definitely a success. And I could probably keep going with this store and this, uh, and this product and see how it goes. So just diving into the uh, Facebook campaign here, I went ahead and named it uh, Testing Phase 1 CBO $200. If you're wondering why it's $200 and not $150, like I mentioned earlier, that's actually because I'm living in Canada. So I, I do uh, manage all the uh, finances in uh, US, but when it comes to uh, running ads on the ad account, I actually uh, run them in Canadian dollars. So that's why it's 200 here. And then uh, scrolling down, I uh, use CBO. And so I'm sure you're familiar with CBO already, but CBO basically distributes the budget across all your different ad sets and will automatically allocate money towards better performing ad sets. Um, so now that it's 2020, um, it's kind of a different ball game from uh, the earlier years in terms of running ads on Facebook. And I would highly, highly, highly recommend um, just giving Facebook as much control over your campaigns and ad sets as possible as uh, the machine learning algorithm knows far better than we do uh, in terms of how to um, match up your ad with a potential customer. And then uh, just diving into the ad sets here, I made a total of eight different ad sets. Um, so I started off uh, with using Pampers. So again, it's a big uh, diaper brand. So hopefully people who have been searching up Pampers or have this as a, you know, uh, related to their interest um, will be interested in a product uh, like mine or the one that I'm selling. So uh, in terms of countries that I targeted, I went ahead and targeted all of the uh, countries that my supplier could express ship to. Um, so that's something you typically want to do. And then, uh, you know, scrolling down here, Pampers was really the only interest that I had there. And then I excluded AliExpress and dropshipping uh, just so I don't get other, you know, dropshippers coming on and uh, trying to rip off my content. And so the same way through for all the other ad sets, um, I just created different interests um, that were similar and, uh, you know, might, might spark interest um, on the product. Um, in a later video, I'm going to get further uh, in depth on how I set up Facebook campaigns and um, exactly what I do uh, to set up all my um, ad sets and ads and everything. So if you're interested in that, uh, subscribe to my channel. It'll be out very soon, uh, probably within the next few weeks. I'm going to do a whole uh, crash course tutorial on Facebook ads. Um, so anyways, that's uh, basically the setup of the campaign that I went with. And then looking at the results here, uh, I'd spent... Uh, total budget, so $201 there. And then um, basically I got a return of $226 uh, with a total of two purchases, uh, both from the same ad set, uh, which was very interesting, the ad set of Infant. Um, that's likely because that ad set, ad set had the uh, most amount of people in it. So Facebook allocated most of the budget. So there you see $75 uh, was allocated into the infant ad set, uh, thus producing uh, the best results for me. So if I was going to continue uh, running this campaign, what I would probably do is turn off some of the underperforming ad sets. 
uh, some of the ad sets that didn't get any budget allocated to them, or I would set a minimum spend rule. But again, I'll go way more in depth and in detail into uh, exactly what I do with my campaigns and how I structure them and how I continue running ads uh, in a later video. So if you guys are still watching, thank you guys very much for making it to the end of the video. I really hoped you guys got something out of this video or it inspired you to get started on a store or something. Um, but don't forget to go subscribe and like the video because I'm going to be posting tons more content over the next few weeks. So don't miss out on that and have a good rest of your day. Peace out.